Salutations everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover and thank you for joining me here in TNO, the last days of Europe, in which we're going to explore the Kazakh Purification Army. Kazakh military and paramilitary remnants radicalized by Taborski's race war, with nothing left to lose and consumed by nothing but hate. They've become a Kazakh analog of the Black League, with an even more radical form of Akhtal's ethno supremacism as part of their ideology. Life for the Poles and the Russians of their lands will be short and quite brutal. Ooh, this sounds like fun. And we're led by Mr. Sunglasses himself, Safa Gaziz. If you'd like to read about him, please go right ahead, but very cool. Kazakh down. At the end of days, that's how it looked to a young Stumoviki stuck in the Kazakh plains on Aktau. The scorching sun beating down on him as he tried to fiddle with a shoddy radio. It had been days since his comrades had ceased to answer his calls and God knows how long since the region had returned to him. He was alone in a land far away, far different from the Siberian village he grew up in and filled with subhumans he'd sworn to purify in the name of the Holy Russian Empire. Yet in spite of being seemingly stranded in a forsaken land, he kept hoping that he'd hear anything on the radio, anything that would give him some semblance of hope, and for a second it seemed as if his hopes were coming true as the radio picked up a signal to all the Russian dogs still defiling these lands in time for retribution has come for you. The crimes committed by the Mad Regent and his rabid dog shall be avenged for every slight committed against the Kazakh people. It shall be punished tenfold. I, Safa Gaziz, Grand Marshal of the Purification Army, make this promise. We will come for you, your wives and children, your precious homes and churches, and your beloved motherland. As you plunder our lands and smother our blue sky into one, as black as your heart, so shall we, the sons of Genghis and T Tamerlane, shall bring fear to Russia once more. The soldier felt disgust as well as amazement that a Kazakh would even be able to handle any kind of technology, but most of all he felt despair as the prospect of rescue seemed dim, and out of this feeling of despair, fear grew in his heart as he clutched ever so tightly to his rifle. You reap what you sow. And, of course, we're national ultra-nationalists. We have some dudism. The raid fails. Oh, boy, that's not good. We have a little bit of more dudism under Nikolai Z Zabelkin. Despotism under Nikolai Onoprinko. Conservative democracy under Sabit Mukhanov. And we have, it looks like, maybe some sort of socialism here as well. Libertarian socialism under the great old American icon, Alex Jones, but a promise kept. Looking at them, dwelling in their run-down little houses, cheering, laughing, thinking of themselves untouchables as they were under the region's protection. No more. Days ago, the inhabitants of the small Russian enclave on the banks of the Aral Sea were warned by our leader that the day of retribution would come for them, yet they stayed here, probably thinking that we were but jumped-up thieves. This would be a costly mistake, and their last at that, in an instant. Our warriors swooped in the village, lording other Slavic scum as they gunned down them with no distinction, exulting in making them pay for the crimes done under the centuries of old Russian yoke. As their houses burned and their neighbors lay dead, the remaining villagers tried fleeing to the sea in a last-ditch effort to save their pathetic lives. A futile effort. From the banks of the sea, the soldiers of the KPA would gun them down as they stood on top of their horses. Soon, the fresh water of the Aral Sea would turn crimson red as bodies floated away before sinking of once. Our sky was blue, as the Sky Father intended. On this day, it shone like as bright as a ruby. Retribution, of course, came, and we have a national spirit. Eye for an eye. Pretty good defense for core territory. Recruitable population, not too good, but it is what it is. And, of course, an earth that has been heavily s salted. Blood purge. In every family, there is a black sheep. The child everyone is ashamed of, casting a giant shadow on one's family's pride. And Kazakhstan has plenty of black sheep. For centuries, the sons and daughters of the Sky Father have been under the Russian yoke, and many have been bewitched by the benefits brought them from assisting them. Worse, some have even mingled with those devils, diluting the pure blood of the Kazakh population over time. A divided house now finds itself at a crossroads, sure to find peace and letting old wounds be healed over time, leaving families reuniting despite differences, or are there some lines meant to not be crossed, evidently. Gaziz had no want for peaceful reconciliation in his mind as he ordered a race traders to be purged. Day and night, the KPA soldiers took care of the question. They tortured and hanged those who fought under the USSR. Leaving the corpses as warnings at the entrances of Aktau, the women were first shamed by having their hair shaved before being left to their fate in the harsh steppes under the blue sky of Central Asia. And the steppes turned crimson. We have a one-party state, my friends, a state religion, and trade unions are state control. We have Corvée slavery, outlawed public meetings, no voting is allowed here, and skilled refugees only. Cool. Cyrus's lament. 
a mirror turned on the scrappy radio that sat on the top of the shelf. Luckily, <clears throat> his village had been mostly spared the violence that had befallen his country after the collapse of the Russians that occupied the region. Since then, the radio waves have been absent from the usual dribble the Russians spouted, denouncing, of course, the Jews, non-Aryans, and other groups that had drawn the hate of the Holy Russian Empire, tuning in to the most commonly used frequency for wide-ranging broadcasts, and to surprise, found himself in the middle of a message. And who was responsible for, for all this death and destruction? To find the answer to this, comrades, you need not look at the banners of the degenerates and hoes that could occupy these lands for so many years. The Russians, the subhumans, and the complacent with our oppression. The Uzbekis, the Iranians, the Tajiks, and why did they oppress us so, my comrades? The answer, of course, is they were terrified of the demonstrable superiority of Kazakh blood. We are an ancient, noble people. Why? One must only look at the incredible achievements of our people throughout history. The speech was quickly silenced by Mir, cutting off the power to the radio. He wasn't a fool. He had heard of these xenophobes, the Kazakh purification army, is what they call themselves. But they were no different than the Russians before them. Frankly, Amir was assured that he could replace the references to Russians and Iranians with Jews and Tatars, and it would sound just like a speech for the Holy Russian Empire. Amir decided it was time to finally retire the radio. There was nothing to gain from the word of his fellow man anymore. The cruelty of man realized. And let's take a look. Security is anarchic. Cool. Let's see what's increasing here. Academic base, research facilities, not agriculture, poverty is getting worse, industrial equipment is going up, uh, no expertise, army professionals will army professionalism is getting worse, as well as no nuclear power, and anything else here? Elite-only education. Cool. Not ac applicable tax income, but no black in the blue. Anur dismounted from his horse and quickly scanned the small clearing in the forest that they had stopped to rest him. Declining or deciding it was safe, Alinur returned to where his horse was waiting and helped Kristana off the horse. They had been on the run from the KPA for a few weeks now, occasionally sleeping anywhere but they could, whether it be the basement of a sympathetic townsperson or the cold forest floor huddled together to conserve heat. Tonight, it looks as if it would be, of course, the latter. As they embraced each other near a small fire they had started, Alunur thought back to the night this journey began. Eleanor began, uh, had planned on laying low with Christina and waiting out the collapse of the Holy Russian Empire until things returned to a sense of normalcy. However... That normalcy never came. Seemingly overnight, the Kazakh Purification Army swept through western Kazakhstan. The news of the brutal treatment of the Russian population moving even faster, quickly abandoning their plans, Eleanor and Kristina, Kristina scrambled to vacate their small village. After all, Kristina was a Russian, and even worse so, she was an imperial Russian settler sent over with her family. When the KPA marched into their village, burning down houses and dragging out the few other Russians residing there to be shot on the street, the couple realized that there was no time left, taking only what they could carry and stealing a horse left unattended. They escaped into the night, being pursued by the KPA. If they had been caught that night, Alinor was suddenly pulled back to reality by the gentle sobs of Christina. Embracing her tighter, Alinor stared into the crackling fire in front of them, stealing himself to face whatever was her future, a scene of peace in a sea of violence. And this sounds like a very fun nation to play as if they would have a unique focus stream but if you enjoyed the video leave a like like normal subscribe if you're new check out my discord link in the description below if you haven't already and i'll see you tomorrow in another video thanks for watching have a great rest of your day